This guide covers all the actions the Marauder and Warrior learns from level 1 to 50 in order. We go over how each action is meant to be used and recommend ways to use it when relevant. We will not be covering how tanking works in much detail, as I have a separate video on this particular subject that I highly recommend you also take a look at if you're new to tanking. In the summary, we will cover a detailed attack rotation for use at level 50 that encompasses all the things you learn throughout this guide. Now then, Heavy Swing is your starting weapon skill. It is the first step in a 3-step combo, more commonly called a 1-2-3 combo, so at this point you simply use this repeatedly. At level 4, you learn the weapon skill Maim, the second step of your 1-2-3 combo. Now you alternate between Heavy Swing and Maim. At level 6, you learn the ability Berserk. While weapon skills incur a 2.5 second recast time where you can't cast another weapon skill, abilities are unaffected by this recast timer and so can be cast between them. As such, you can activate Berserk between the uses of two weapon skills. If you want to know more, watch this short on the subject of GCDs. Berserk makes your next three weapon skills guaranteed to be critical direct hits. Critical hits deal 40% more damage by default, but is increased by the critical hits stat. Direct hits deal 25% more damage, meaning that by combining these, Berserk effectively increases your damage by 75% for your next three weapon skills. At this level, you should use Heavy Swing, followed by Berserk, and then use Maim, Heavy Swing, Maim, to get the maximum value out of this cooldown. You should try to use it whenever it is available, rather than saving it, due to its somewhat short cooldown of one minute. At level 8, you learn the ability and roll action Rampart, which reduces all damage taken for a while. It is best used early on in a fight where there are the most enemies and you will take the biggest brunt of the damage. Make sure to wait with using it until the enemies reach you, such that it blocks the largest amount of damage. You should not save Rampart for when you are close to death, use it early and often. At level 10, you learn the weapon skill Overpower, your go-to action for area of effect damage or AoE for short. Use this whenever you are fighting two or more enemies. Berserk can simply be spent on three overpowers back to back. You also learn the ability Defiance, your tank stance, which multiplies enmity by 10. You should always have this active, as it practically forces enemies to focus you in combat. Take note that if you enter content where your level is scaled down, the effect of Defiance is toggled off, so make sure to check that it is still there when you start. At level 12, you learn the ability and roll action Low Blow, which stuns the enemy. You can use this to prevent spell casts from enemies and stop an enemy from swinging at you for a bit, reducing damage taken. Often, bosses will be immune, but in the early dungeons this is not always the case. At level 15, you learn the weapon skill Tomahawk. It comes with a massive enmity multiplier that stacks with defiance. If you hit something with this, that enemy should stick to you for a long time. Use this for pulling enemies, and try to use it just as the enemy gets in range when pulling with it, so you can do something else when they get up close. You can also use it for picking up enemies that appear during a fight. Take note that Tomahawk does not break your 1-2-3 combo, and can be used between the combo pieces just fine. You also learn the ability and role action Provoke. This ability sets your enmity equal to whoever has the most enmity on the target, and then applies enmity as if you did 2000 potency worth of damage, which stacks with defiance. This makes it a very reliable tool for picking up enemies that appear during a fight, or enemies you lose the attention of. In content with multiple tanks, you should not use it on cooldown, you should use it tactically when necessary. Combining Tomahawk and Provoke can allow you to reliably pull three enemies without stopping when you get comfortable with pulling multiple packs of enemies at a time. In fact, dungeons become available at level 15, and for tanking especially, it is very useful to know a special interaction of your starting action Sprint. Sprint lasts 20 seconds if you use it before you enter combat. If you use it while in combat, it only lasts 10 seconds. So, using it just before pulling is beneficial. At level 18, you learn the ability and role action Interject, which can be used to stop interruptible actions. If an enemy is using an interruptible action, the cast bar will be red and pulsing and blinking. Try to time your Interject as late as possible in the cast without missing the opportunity, such that the enemy wastes as much time as possible casting for nothing. At level 22, you learn the ability and role action Reprisal, which reduces the damage all enemies around you do. 
You can use this action when Rampart runs out to soften the damage you receive. Try not to use both at the same time, as that is overkill for most situations. If you know the boss is using an attack that hits your entire party, Reprisal is also a good choice to bring out at that time, since it softens it for everyone, not just yourself. At level 26, you learn the weapon skill Storm's Path, the third step of your 1-2-3 combo. Storm's Path additionally heals you when it is used. With Storm's Path in your 1-2-3 combo, you should instead use this combo on two targets specifically, alternating targets to make sure both enemies are hitting you. You can tell that an enemy is targeting specifically you by the gems in the enemy list turning red. For three or more targets, you should still just use Overpower. Regarding Berserk, you can use it whenever you like now, as you will likely just use a 1-2-3 combo, and the order does not matter for Berserk. Just make sure you're not about to use Tomahawk when you do use Berserk. At level 30, you learn the ability Thrill of Battle. This increases your health somewhat, and heals you for the same amount. It should be considered among your defensive cooldowns, but at this moment it is significantly weaker than both Rampart and Reprisal, and will continue to be so until level 78. You could save Thrill of Battle as an emergency button since it does heal for the same amount. Also at level 30, doing your class questline will eventually lead you to the Warrior Quest, which is available once you complete the main scenario quest, Self Management. Once you unlock the warrior, remember to equip your soul crystal to change into the warrior job. At level 32, you learn the ability and roll action Arm's Length. This ability makes you immune to most knockback effects, and if a normal enemy hits you, its attack speed is slowed for a while. This does make it a very potent defensive tool on packs of enemies. I recommend adding it after reprisal in your defensive order. At level 35, you learn the weapon skill Inner Beast and unlock the Beast Gauge. When you use Maim and Storm's Path, you generate 10 and 20 Beast Gauge respectively, and you can hold up to 100. Using Inner Beast spends 50 Beast Gauge. If your next weapon skill will make you generate Beast Gauge beyond 100, use Inner Beast. Otherwise, you should simply stockpile Beast Gauge. When you use Berserk, try to time it so the next step in your 1-2-3 combo is Storm's Path if you have enough Beast Gauge for two Inner Beasts, meaning 80 or more. Then you should fit Storm's Path and two Inner Beasts in any order in the Berserk. If you can only afford one Inner Beast, you should use Berserk when Maim is the next step in your 1-2-3 combo instead. This means 20 or more Beast Gauge. I would recommend when starting a fight to simply go with a 1-2-3 combo in Berserk to not delay the cooldown. Using it at all is better than using it perfectly. Inner Beast does not break your 1-2-3 combo and can be used between your combo pieces whenever you want to. At level 38, you learn the ability Vengeance. In addition to reducing the damage you take significantly, it also makes you swing back for some damage on every enemy that hits you. In your order of defensive cooldowns, you should use Vengeance as your first option due to its high potency, not to mention its offensive value. Remember to not overlap your defensive cooldowns, however, as in most circumstances it is unnecessary and excessive. My recommended use order is Vengeance, Reprisal, Rampart, Arm's Length. Preferably, when doing AoE packs, you want Vengeance and Reprisal to be used in one pool, and Rampart and Arm's Length to be used in another. At level 40, you learn the weapon skill Mithril Tempest. This is your follow-up attack after Overpower. Mithril Tempest also grants you the Surging Tempest buff, increasing all damage you do for 30 seconds. Using it again will extend it by 30 seconds, but only up to a maximum of 60 seconds. On two targets, you should only use the Mithril Tempest combo to gain the Surging Tempest buff, and otherwise should use your 1-2-3 combos. On three or more targets, you alternate between Overpower and Mithril Tempest. If possible, try to use Berserk just before Mithril Tempest. On single target, applying the Surging Tempest buff with Mithril Tempest is a small damage gain over not using it, but only if it does not lose you out on an inner beast used during Berserk, and you get to attack for the full duration of Surging Tempest. It is a damage loss if you attack for less than 25 seconds of the duration. When starting a single target fight, I do recommend opening with a Mithril Tempest combo and then using Berserk to boost your starting damage. Take note that Berserk also increases the duration of Surging Tempest by 10 seconds, assuming it is active in the first place. At level 42, you learn the ability Holmgang, one of the strangest abilities in the game. 
When used, it makes you incapable of dying for 10 seconds. It also, for some reason, has the hidden property of making you immune to most knockback effects just like arm's length does. If you use home gang while targeting something, you will lose the home gang effect if the target dies, for some reason. However, using home gang on a target will snare it for the duration, not that that is particularly helpful in most situations. For this reason, it is recommended to try and target yourself when using home gang to avoid this effect. Home gang should generally be kept as a last resort when things go completely wrong. The closer to death you are when you use it, the more likely it is that you actually end up preventing damage with it. At level 45, you learn the weapon skill Steel Cyclone. This attack is an AoE alternative to Inner Beast, which beats it on two or more targets. Take note that your AoE combo does not generate any beast gauge, so if you are in a single target or two target situation, but know an AoE situation is coming up shortly, it may be beneficial to stockpile beast gauge for that specifically. On AoE, if possible, you want to have Mithril Tempest and as many Steel Cyclones as you can during Berserk. Often this will be zero Steel Cyclones though. At level 48, you learn the ability and role action Shirk, which transfers 25% of your enmity to your target. This is used for tank switching. When your tank partner uses Provoke to grab attention, you Shirk your partner to push them further ahead to ensure the enemy stays on them. This is most useful in high level content, but it is nonetheless useful to know how to use it. At level 50, you learn the weapon skill Storm's Eye. This is an alternative step 3 to your single target combo. It only generates 10 beast gauge and it does not heal you, but it gives you the Surging Tempest buff previously exclusive to Mithril Tempest. Broadly speaking, you want to make sure to apply Surging Tempest as quickly as possible in a fight and then keep Surging Tempest active throughout the fight. If the duration is below 30 seconds, you can choose to use the combo to extend the duration. Otherwise, use the Storm's Path combo instead to generate extra beast gauge and healing. You also learn the ability Infuriate, which, when used, immediately grants you 50 Beast Gauge. You can hold up to two Infuriates at a time and then use them between your weapon skills. Keep in mind that you only generate one charge every 60 seconds, so it will take a total of 120 seconds to regain both charges. The main benefit of Infuriate is that it allows you to open a boss fight with a Berserk containing Storm's Eye and two Inner Beasts. And every subsequent Berserk, you only need 50 Beast Gauge stockpile to fit Storm's Path and two Inner Beasts. It also enables you to use Steel Cyclone at least occasionally in AoE situations. Now to round off, let's cover an actual boss fight opener and rotation. Pull the boss with Tomahawk and use Infuriate as you run. Then use Heavy Swing and then Maim and then Berserk. Then use Storm's Eye, Inner Beast and Infuriate and another Inner Beast. Then you simply do the Storm's Path combo when you don't need to extend Surging Tempest, and Storm's Eye when you do. When your next weapon skill will overflow your Beast Gauge, instead use Inner Beast. When Berserk is ready, plan it such that you can use preferably Storm's Path, or Eye, and two Inner Beasts. This requires 30 Beast Gauge for Path and 40 for Eye, as well as one Infuriate. Only use Infuriate for Berserk. For two targets specifically, replace Inner Beast with Steel Cyclone, but otherwise your rotation is unchanged. For three or more targets, use Overpower and Mithril Tempest in place of your 1-2-3 combos. Fit as many Steel Cyclones as you can in Berserk. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support me and my channel, you can like the video, leave a comment, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when next I post a video. If you want to give even more support than that, you can also become a member of the channel. Fun fact, back in Heavensward and A Realm Reborn, instead of the Beast Gauge, the warriors stacked a buff that gave them additional stats up to a maximum of 5 stacks, after which Inner Beast and later Felcleave would be enabled to use, consuming all 5 stacks. You would only generate one stack at a time back then, however, outside of Infuriate, of course.